Ionesco, and this is my draw house class in Java using the uh, drawing tools. So I just have one class called draw house, and uh, it uses basic functions uh, of that class, of the um, APCS lib, using um, an instance of Sketchpad here. I can draw another one. Using the Sketchpad that prints out of a size of 900 pixels on the x axis, 900 pixels on the y axis, and um, a pencil. We created a piece called Pencil, which is a drawing tool that we can draw on. Please excuse the uncalibrated pens. So once we declare our uh, object, pencil, and paper, we're ready to begin. Uh, and most of the way you go about making a program like this is just familiarizing yourself with the layout of the sketch pad and trial and error. So most of the time I would be creating a line, seeing if the length is something that's acceptable, and then uh, going back to the code and fixing it if it's not. So before I get into the code, I'll just run it so you can see what it does. This is my, this is the Mesco estate. Uh, I've got a nice little uh, tiled walkway with a little bit of angled perspective to make Brunelleschi proud in the front with a couple of potted plants there um, and a loft on top of the chimney. So the easiest part was starting with the square and it's hard to find out, hard, hard to find where to start otherwise. So I decided to start with the square. It's the easiest part and then I could work with triangles and stuff after that. Um, so and when you and then talk about how you angled the, how, you how I did the lines absolutely. So the way the uh, sketch pad works is the first line you draw without doing anything, which is this command pencil dot backward three hundred. Three hundred is the length in pixels of the line. Uh, it starts at the center of your drawing tools or of your sketch pad. So I made my sketch pad nine hundred pixels by nine hundred pixels. The center would be right here. That's where I started, and then I went backward, meaning um, I think downwards. I don't remember which direction it starts in, but uh, it goes 300 pixels, then it turns right to 90 degrees. So any of the functions that say turn have a parameter of a degree value that you want them to turn based on the way they were previously oriented. So it, each turn is 90 degrees because it's a square. Easiest part, you go around and you use all the sides of length 300, all the angles of side uh, of uh, degree 90, and you get back to the center. Then I did, this is the only time I actually used this function because I was still learning how to use the uh, APCS lib at the beginning. So you do pencil.home, it brings the cursor right back. <laughs> it brings the cursor right back to the center point right here. Uh, and that was just a way for me to get started with the triangle. So first, I built this, and then I came back here, or I went the other way probably, and I ended here, I came back to home, and then I decided I wanted to do a triangular uh, roof. So that's where I get to the next function. Um, after I declare, after I bring my cursor back home, or my pencil rather, I started at a 45 degree angle. So you can see the roof is, is a um, isosceles triangle, so I created a 45 degree angle. Let me see if I can position both. That's better. So I did a 45 degree angle, and then these dimensions, 213 and 212, are like I said, all found through trial and error. So. I decide I wanted to get it to the center of the house, and um, since it's a little different when you're not doing a 90 degree angle, it's not working directly in boxes, so 45 won't be 45 as it would 90. So I had to fiddle around with that for a little bit, uh, and then the 90 degree turn is right up here, back to go to the other side. So that was the easiest part, getting the triangle, or that was the second easiest part after the square, I guess, was getting the triangle in. Um, but as I was going, I decided I wanted to add a couple of features, amenities to my mansion, um, like this loft with a nice window up here and a nice chimney. Um, so the two, the two tools I used the most were these uh, up and down functions. What this does is imagine yourself writing with a pencil. When you lift it up, you can move your hand anywhere and start somewhere else and pick it up. So this program wouldn't know that otherwise. If I didn't do pencil up, Every time I moved, it would draw a line from one place to the next. It's like drawing a house without picking the pencil up once. So that function I use, or that um, command I use very often, up and down, to put the pencil back down. So as you see, I lifted it up, then I did move. And this is a coordinate. 100 on the x-axis, negative 100 on the y, starting from this as the center point. So if you imagine this being a coordinate plane right here, 
you have um, the first quadrant, second, third, fourth. I did 100 this way and negative 100 here. So this is when I was building my door. <laughs> and it goes step by step. I won't go into each little piece, but you get the idea. This is another function that started to come more handy after I built the square. Set direction looks at that axis, and you give it a degree. So in the parameters there, I have 0, meaning it's going to the right. And it started with this part right here. So I reset the coordinates 100 and negative 300 to right here. And I moved forward 100. And I set the direction to 0. So anywhere you set the direction, that does not turn according to that degree angle, but it just looks at a coordinate plane like this, determining that this is 0 degrees. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is very uncalibrated. But that's 0 degrees that way. And that's basically how I went about doing all of the things there. Uh, the only exceptions are the uh, entranceway to my house, which has some uh, things that are curved to a perspective, which did take a lot of trial and error to see if I could get everything to match. Uh, and the, f the potted plants and the doorknob, as you can tell, those are circles. Uh, and those are of different colors. So I had to do um, set color is another function of there that you actually have to import uh, java.ot.color. Uh, and you can do color.blue, color.red. I only use blue and red, but I tried yellow. There's lots of other colors you can use. Uh, Java makes it pretty uh, adaptable for that if you want to make something else. And then the draw string. Set width just changes the pen size. It defaults to one pixel, your, your, your uh, pen size. So I went to three, and then I wrote the string Daniel Mesco's Mansion. Uh, just by moving the pixels here, I kind of centered the words above my door so that everybody who comes into my house can see that they know whose property they're on. They know they shouldn't be touching anything because this is my house. Uh, and then I set the color back to black to draw all the lines. So the circles are a different situation, as you can see here. They're uh, a, a, a command called draw circle. And in parentheses, I have the radius. Uh, st so when you, when you move your pen, it starts at the center point and then moves outward like a radius. I know that um, a s one of the draw tools we used last year in Java didn't do that, which was the hardest part to, to figure out. It started on the left side of the circle. So when you set a radius of 5, it would start at that point and go outwards. This starts from the middle and, and stretches evenly in all directions. So that was much more easy to do. Like, for example, with the doorknob, it was really hard to find the coordinate that would fit where the doorknob should be. So when the radius is 5, it, it works really well. And then I lift up the pencil, move the pen some more. Um, this is more of the same. Building the windows, this is all the 90 degree turn rights. These are also square windows. Um, not, a lot of, not a lot of view out to the street, though. I should have given myself some bigger windows. I can afford it, obviously. It's a nice house. Um, this is where it started to get interesting. The, uh, I think so. Or maybe it's a little further down. Yeah, when I started to build the uh, pathway in front of my house, I had to start messing around with the degrees. Here you see negative 50 and things like that um, to, to make sure I was getting everything right because that was a little more difficult. So negative 50 would be the same as doing 310 degrees. I just looked at it as an easier plane to bend like that. Um, so when I did the pathway here, I did first this line on the left. I started by moving my coordinates to where I knew something familiar, which I knew the door was 100 in. Since this is a 300 uh, pixel house, I split it 100, 100, 100. So I moved to, um, this is 100 on the x, coming from here, and negative 300 all the way at the base of my house. So I started there, and I just drew a line with a random uh, angle that I figured might be good, and I liked it. And I didn't really do much tweaking, so this was a good angle. I figured if you were looking at it from a corner, that's how you would see it. What angle is that? Uh, negative 50, I think. So it's the same as 310 around in the fourth quadrant. Um, and then everything else had to be based in that same direction. So as you see, I had to create identical copies of that line all the way over to the other side of the door. So I did all of those with negative 50 degrees, and then I went across and did just zero degrees um, to get the tile slot, slots in. So these lines that you see here, it's an interesting way the perspective makes it look, but these lines here are all zero degrees. So they're all the same as the door, the same as the roof. Uh, only the curve is different. So that was sort of easy. Once I got the grid going, I knew how far I needed to space them. As you can see, the pixels are evenly spaced each time I... Uh, I move my pen, they're like 10 over and, th and 13 down, something like that, just so I can make it work perfectly. The most difficult part with aligning with the perspective was probably the potted plants. Because of the fact that the radius uh, starts from the center of the circle, I was basically guessing with points that I had to figure out um, and then moving them around as they, you know, as I needed. Uh, so I s those are somewhere down here as I set, yeah, 
Here I go color red, color blue, color red, color blue. It's somewhat redundant, but I wanted to have a nice little pattern where the potted plants, where the pots were blue, the flower was red. And then the pot was red, the flower was blue. So uh, that was just a little stylistic creation of my own. But once I kind of got all the uh, pixels correct, just, you see some of the numbers seem a little negative one, uh, 154 and negative 365. Um, I arrived at that number after trying probably 160, 140, and then 150, realizing that it just didn't quite align right. So once you get it a couple times, it works well. And then this probably was the last thing I did is the um, this potted plant down here on the bottom left. Again, making coordinates. It's it, like we've all been doing, as everybody in the class has, you take out a sheet of paper almost, and you want to draw geometric shapes to try to figure out where they would line up on a, on a uh, grid. Because the, the draw window sketch pad doesn't give you a grid to see where, you're, where you are and how you're moving. If it did, it would just be every single pixel. So it's kind of difficult. But once you get your bearings about, it becomes sort of easy to do, and you can move around. Just the difficult part is the angles. <laughs> They're reaching out of the ground like this, probably. <laughs> on segways. Yeah, that, I'm glad it's not that. I'm glad it's just some uh, landscaping. Okay, um, so Daniel, go back to your photo. Sure. Um, how many methods overall uh, from ACS did you use? Just a rough estimate. Uh, let's see. I did set color, set direction, turn right, turn left, forward, and backward. Uh, rough estimate, total probably eight. Okay. Eight or ten. And they were all on the uh, documentation that you uh, provided for us. It has everything. That's, that was my best friend. That's how I referenced all this kind of stuff. Because, for example, like Camila and I were talking about the set color function here, um, we didn't really know exactly what was supposed to go in the parameters. We thought originally all you had to do was put black or red or whatever, and you could erase color dot. But we didn't even know that you had to import uh, a color file from uh, java.ot. So oh, when we went back. Um, well, I might have done something a little more three-dimensional. The only thing that gives any perspective is obviously the, the, the front porch area, right. but the house is 2D. Um, so one thing I consider doing, adding a third dimension, uh, and also with my potted plants and the, the walkway, the alignments I made were just still rough estimates found through trial and error. If I sat down with a, with a piece of paper and a pen, I could calculate all the proportions that I needed so I could get the pixels a little better. But those were just kind of rough estimates um, done through trial and error. I didn't really have the time to sit down with that. But that's something I would do. First, the first thing would probably be to line those properly. Okay, and let's just get one thing straight. You really don't live in that house, right? Uh, actually, yeah, this exact house is, is on Kendall Drive. This is where I live. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, sorry, Dad. Very, very close to that okay. <laughs> I liked it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Daniel, outstanding. Outstanding job. Thank you. Uh, Alt P, please. Alt P. Alt P.